and I will pass it off. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Good Good morning. morning. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Tony. Good morning. I'm going to wait a second for to see if Christine um, joins us, as I expect she as I expect she will, and then we'll get started. How are things in Amherst? Is the sun shining? Every no? day is every day is paradise here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to move there, Austin. <laughs> so. Um, Please don't, it just drives up housing prices. <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to say that, but- <laughs> how, how does that work? Wouldn't it do the opposite if more people moved here? No, it's the people who come from Boston who have very- oh. And they come here and they think, oh, well. Got it. Drives up housing prices. <laughs> so I think what we should do is we should get started um, when Christine, uh, joins us, uh, she will take over chairing the chairing the meeting. I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage since I didn't anticipate chairing and therefore don't have the agenda in front of me. Sharon, do you have the agenda in front of you? Yeah, first is the minutes of May 19th. So would someone please move to approve the minutes of May 19th? So moved. George, would you second them? I would love to second them. Thank you. Is there are any corrections to the minutes? Good. By the way, I should have said, uh, but first we'll vote. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Uh, Austin votes yes. So what I should have said is this is a meeting of the design subcommittee of the Jones Library Building Committee. Uh, we are meeting uh, under the authority granted by the governor of Massachusetts to have virtual uh, virtual meetings. I want to note the presence of five attendees in the audience and thank them very much for um, for joining us. The membership of the subcommittee present is Sharon Sherry. You've heard her voice. Here. George Hicks Richards. George. Here. And Aust Austin Sarrett is here. And we're joined by uh, our fabulous OPM and uh, several representatives of our fabulous partners from FAA. Sharon, what's next on the agenda? Uh, Craig, Car Collier's project leaders. Craig, take it away. Thank you. So I'll, uh, I'll share my screen. Just give a quick schedule update. And Craig, you before, guys, before yes, you yeah. do, I see Christine joining us. Let's just wait a second until she's there. And then we can say, good morning, Christine. We, um, we launched, but I'm happy to turn over the meeting over to you. Craig is just about to give us an update on the timeline. I heard that. Thank you. And sounds That's good. Perfect. Okay, so this was the same schedule that I uh, presented to the library building committee meeting earlier this week. Um, for the folks at home, this is our overall project schedule. Our main phases are listed here on the on the left hand side. The timeline goes across the top of the screen. We are at this vertical red line right here, or a couple days after that vertical red line, uh, which shows us um, solidly in the schematic design phase. Um, so this is a, an intensive phase where the design team is collecting information, putting it into the, um, to the ever evolving documents, ever evolving design, and, uh, and we're meeting regularly here with the design um, subcommittee. Later this month, um, or actually towards the end of June, um, we'll be looking for to start a cost estimate process. Um, so that by the end of the schematic design phase, we have updated cost estimates um, to help make decisions and, and understand where the project is relative to its anticipated cost. So that's all I have for schedule and budget update or cost update. Um, so with your permission, Chris, oh, so that's the end of my report, unless there are any questions. I don't see any hands. Thanks, Craig. You got it. So I'll stop sharing. Okay. So we'll move to item four 
um, I see we have a bunch of um, fine gold <laughs> Alexander people. Welcome. Um, uh, who's leading it up today? I'll, I'll start just saying uh, good morning, everybody. And Austin's not letting me move to Amherst. I get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we so we we had a great couple of weeks since we last met you guys. Um, we met with Sharon earlier this week. Went through um, a lot of her comments and changes she was uh, she and her staff were suggesting. So we're gonna just launch in and, and uh, show you what we've done since then. Great, thank you, Josephine. Do you want to share screens and take us? Yeah, through it? I'll go ahead and share our screen the PDF. If everyone could just let me know if you're seeing uh, the floor plans. We can see them. Great. So um, shall we start on the ground floor? Yeah, I think that I think that would do that, uh, Justine, and take us up per floor. Yeah. And so, if anybody has, sorry, Josephine, if anybody has any questions as Josephine's going through this, please shout it out. Yeah, feel free to just interrupt and stop, and this can sort of be a discussion as we as we move up the building. Um, so as Ellen mentioned, we went through um, the MBLC comments and the staff comments and, um, and also the collections that the adjusted collections that Sharon had sent. And um, we sort of have, it's a work in progress, but this is where we are. And we sort of incorporated all of those elements. Um, and, and so we'll just sort of walk you through the, the ground floor and I guess we'll start at the vestibule. This is the rear entry of the building, as you all know. Um, you can see it changed a little bit from the last time we spoke. Um, and some of the bigger bigger elements that changed here were the special collections. And what we did here was per um, the staff requests is that we pretty much, um, <clears throat> so, so sorry, give me just one second. And I think part of the <clears throat> part of it, the staff had some great suggestions. I'm just going to yes. chime in. So we rejiggered um, the spaces, and it really makes great sense. So we're all for what uh, Sharon and her staff are recommending. Yes. So sorry about that. <laughs> uh, uh, a frog in my throat. Um, so special collections is all now within this wing here, and you can see it in yellow. Um, so what we did was we um, sort of enveloped the original wing here with the special collection storage. And um, unbelievably, we actually have the square footage um, to, to fit the elements in there. Um, I don't know if you can see well, but we can certainly zoom in for you guys. But we also added the workroom into this space, um, which is this block here. Um, and then the rest of the special collections, the reading room and the exhibits um, are in the new addition back here. We kept the tech service workroom um, where it, it had previously been located here. Um, so with that, we were able to sort of rework the core a little bit as well and, um, and the vestibule entry, which we uh, made larger um, as well be because we had shifted some things within the core element here. Um, the art gallery we maintained in this um, central location here. Um, the, the bigger piece was keeping an after hours um, entry for the space because we um, did shift the small meeting room to be close to the large meeting room so it could be accessible as well after hours. Um, so the idea is still that we're coming off the rear entry vestibule using this main corridor space to get to the restrooms and the small meeting room. Um, but we would have some block offs for the after hours use. Um, the idea is that we currently are showing a door here, um, which could certainly open up and just be an overhead gate if that's the route that we wanted to choose. But at the moment, it's we're just showing it closed off with um, some glazed doors. Um, and then the main stair and elevator um, we maintained where it was previously located but we are showing some security gates that would block that off for the overnight use as well. So the art gallery, small meeting room, um, and you know this whole wing here would be all um, accessible in the evening. 
Um, and then the rest of the ground floor was really maintained as it was previously. Um, we have the friend storage back here, uh, mechanical and facilities um, where it was previously as well. Um, are there, there any questions on this floor before we move up? Christine, may I ask a question? Yes, please. So again, thank you. This is so exciting to see. So I wanna just, um, just um, ask a couple of questions. Uh, I want to have a pretty good idea of what that back entrance is going to look like. Uh, and, and I wonder what more you can say about that back, um, that back entrance. Uh, is it going to be kind of like what is there now in terms of its appearance, clearly uh, kind of as a secondary um, entrance? That's number one. Number two, to anticipate something that you probably have not even had a chance to look at, but I do want to just mention it here. Uh, public, we, we've, we've been really graced by a lot of public comments already. And as you know, incredibly well served by our outreach subcommittee. One of the sets of concerns that I remember has to do with the Burnett at Art Gallery. Uh, and I just want to, just say out loud what some of those concerns were. As I remember them, Sharon might have them more at hand. One of them had to do with um, its kind of position and prominence and how people would find it. Uh, so if I come in the back entrance, uh, is there gonna be some signage or something that is gonna direct me to the Burnett um, Art Gallery? And just to say out loud, um, of course, I, I assume almost everything here, I'm not so sure about the back, uh, the back part, that I don't see any, I don't see any windows. This is all below ground. And one, of, I mean, not a surprise. One of the things that had been mentioned in public comment, uh, I'm not saying it, this is what I want or what the committee should want, but I just want your reaction to it was the possibility that the Burnett Gallery, Art Gallery, I mean, I quite like the location of it, but should be located in a way where it could get natural light. So could you say something about the um, the back entrance? How is it gonna look and really it's gonna look like a, a uh, secondary entrance? And my third question has to do with bathrooms. Um, what is your current thinking, or if, if you're there yet, you may not be there yet about uh, gender inclusive bathrooms, and could you just point us to where the bathrooms are on this floor? Um, sorry, trust me. Before you start, um, if I may interject, um, Oswald, I'm going to pull up um, for a second if I if I could screen share. We actually have a rendering from the original design, which I'm going to try to show you what it looked like in the proposal. Um, but let me try to see if I can help you to I see if you this. can just take over. Okay, I don't know if I've taken over. Can you see my yeah. screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is the rendering we produced um, from the design and hasn't really changed. So this is from the back. And the area that you see with the kind of extended portico in the corner, which is sort of colored in white, this is in fact the entrance leading in from this rear. Um, and to your second question, um, Austin, it actually is not underground here. Because the grade drop on the side occurs, you can see on the left hand, image on the mass, that's actually the windows in that gallery. So in point of fact, no. this is all above grade. Um, that's not true, Tony. The gallery slid in the, towards what we tried to do yep. is I'm if sorry. you go back to the plan, the, the gallery is not there. Yep. Um, and we, Austin, you know, great eyes. We did move it. If you can go back to the plan. Sure, I'll stop sharing. Uh, but um, just say this, this back entrance, if, um, I think we want to keep our eyes on it in terms of yes. what it looks like. This looks kind of quite nice to me, but others may have different, others may have different views of it. Thank you, Tony, for showing it. Sure, I'll stop sharing. I'll let Chelsea take that over. And that's helpful. One thing, though, I wanted to, if just looking at the plan, it'll just take it, just for a second to get it back up. Right, thank you. Um, and this is how I'm envisioning this, right? And folks can chime in. So that you come into this lobby, we've made it a, a little bigger. And then to get to the art gallery, Austin, I envision that hallway, thanks Josephine for pointing it out, that being filled with art, right? And signage, directing people 
to get back to the art gallery back in this corner. Tony, you're correct that we previously had it up, up to having windows, but with this new layout, uh, we've moved it to the back. And what we're showing is a set of doors, but this could be expansive glass into the corridor. So we, we, we really do see this as the, you know, the hallway corridor as part of the extension of the gallery with artwork funneling people back to the corner. Thank you. And, and bath uh, bathrooms. Go ahead, Josephine. Yeah, and um, and and so these plans just to add to what both Ellen and Tony said. These are somewhat re representational, so you're not seeing every glazed opening here. Um, mm -hmm. So there is, you know, light in a lot of these spaces, but. Um, uh, that aren't being shown here, but um, just to touch on the bathrooms, which maybe this could be a discussion we save more towards the end. We do have some images to show you, but the idea is that there's a couple of different approaches for gender inclusive bathrooms, and um, and we can talk a little bit more about what those are um, towards the end of this. But the idea would be that um, depending on the route that we would take, um, if we're able to take um, that these could potentially get a little bit larger if we need to because we do have the space as you can see we really um enlarged the vestibule um and the in the kitchen and co-closets are a nice size at the moment if we needed a little bit of more room for the restrooms it probably is feasible but it's something that we would look at as we um, further develop the plan um would you like for us to get more into um the gender inclusive bathrooms at the moment or do you want us to save that discussion uh, Austin, can we hold that part till when their their presentation? Absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Right. Um, are there any other questions? Um, oh, Sharon. Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing. So the intent has always been, although final decisions haven't been made, but the the Civil War tablets are supposed to be in this core. Mm -hmm corridor as mm -hmm. you all were calling it the galleria yeah um so at, so that's just something to keep in mind mm -hmm. thank you i do have one question um looking at this ground floor and understanding that a lot of it is underground um and there'll be events and gatherings here just i see the the main back entrance there are there other emergency exits or how people could get out of there mm -hmm. if they needed to we have a stair that comes down um, at this level that goes straight out. I'm not sure if you could see my cursor. Yes. So if, if they were having a gathering in the large room, you had talked about a gate or doors being locked potentially right outside of the special collections. How is there any other exit for that area? Just wondering. Christine, we can design it that this the, the barrier between for the stair and the elevator will open during an emergency so okay. if if there's an emergency it opens and people are allowed to go up through the main stair and out the building so we essentially have three options at this location but that's a really good question yeah thanks for the thoughts uh any other questions anyone i don't if you want to move on to your first floor So level one. Um, so a lot of this, um, the main um, pieces here really stayed where they were. What we did was sort of um, finesse a lot of the areas. Um, and uh, with that, again, the collection update really helped us sort of refine some of the boundaries of these spaces. Um, and so um, just walking through, um, the main space at the moment, you'll see um, that we did rejigger some of the core elements here, and we were able to introduce a larger gathering area in this main central space. Um, and and some of that had to do with just the the refig recalculating um, some of the children's area. Um, and so um, I think we have a much more generous um, layout for this um, main central gathering space now. Mm -hmm. um, we did sort of tuck the, the toilet core um, away from that um, eating area um, as, as was requested. And um, 
and and with that, um, there were some sightline requests that MBLC mm -hmm. had asked for um, from the circulation desk, which we had worked on, and and one of those was just um, having more um, connection to the young adult, and so we did rejigger some of that. Um, uh, program element as well by shifting the office and we do have a, a more generous um, workroom now in the YA as well and some of that can be potentially broken up to that makerspace that was requested um, and uh, and I think the space grew a little bit as well so we have a little bit more square footage that we that we that we're able to play with for the young adult um, and just one, I just wanted yeah. to chime in is that, so Sharon gave us some updated figures for the collection, which has reduced and allowed us to have more seating and more flow for people, which is really exciting. Yes. Yeah, because that is an important element and mm -hmm. um, one that I think everyone is battling these days. Um, so, uh, so that that really did help um, with the layout of the spaces, um, and so, and with that, of course, that brings us to to the youth um, program. And you can see here, it feels a little bit more um, open um, because of what Ellen just mentioned about the collections, um, which is great. We shifted the activities room to the new back and back area here, um, and. Um, we think that this works a lot better for the um for, you know just in, in general for an activity room and we still have it closed off but we can you know get into the details as we move forward with with um designing the space um any questions so far I, in Alinda, I just want to comment. One of the big things I, I know it comes from Sharon and her staff and also MBLC is sight lines and security. Um, in the way that we have this configured now, we feel as though we're covering that, but we would certainly encourage anybody if they have any thoughts on that, you know, we're, we are all ears. Uh, the way we have the front circ desk has direct uh, sight lines to the entry into the vertical stair that connects everything. So we think we have it pretty good, but again, if anybody has thoughts, please share them with us. It, if not today, as we go through this, we'll, we'll uh, that's a uh, top priority for us. Great, thanks. Um, one I of those sight line shifts was the borrower office, which we did shift here. I see Sharon nodding her head. <laughs> so yeah. um, we do have sight, you know, a sight, sight line to the adult collection as well here now. Could I ask a question, Christine? Yes, please. So um, again, thank you. This looks this looks really wonderful. So the library, I, I want you to now think about the entrance, which is uh, to the south of the main entrance. So there's a main entrance, and then there's the kind of entrance to the south at the front of the building. And uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that and uh, how that's going to is it going to be preserved? How's it going to work? Uh, I thought of it in terms of um, sight lines. You know, it's one of the interesting quirks of the Jones Library building. If you go in that side door, you have no idea, you know, <laughs> where, where you are and kind of where you're going. So I wonder if you could talk about that that uh, that entrance. So, at the moment with this new layout, um, it's really it, it's just for staff. Of, yeah, it's sort of like a couple of key elements. So we've got the main entry here. Yep. We, we do have an entry here at the, yep. at the youth, but then this area is just the staff entry. Okay, so it will not be for public. People no. will not be able to, fabulous. Thank you no. so much. Right, no. and I, I think the children, the, the doors to the exterior in the children room, children's room can be what you want it to be. It can be just a, a way to get outside for an, uh, an event. Mm -hmm. and not used as an entrance. It can be used as an entrance if, if you decide to do that, but it, we, we don't encourage that because we, we really feel that there should be one entrance, but it's your library and your community. So however you see fit, um, but we do have that option. Uh, I have a question The will both of those or all three of those um, be handicapped accessible? or have 
a ramp, how are they going to, I know there's a height difference of a couple of steps on the front. Yes, um, we, we are showing a ramp at that location at the moment. So and currently they, they are. Right, and Christine, we, the, what we're trying to do at the front entrance is create working with the landscape folks. So it's, you know, it's not a ramp, it's a, it's a sloped walkway. So it's a little bit more graceful, um, but essentially it's a ramp. But you won't, we do it in such a way that you don't need railings and all that stuff. It's really in tune with the landscape. Sounds great. So the one in the children's, that, is that flush or the same thing over there? Yeah, that's flush. I think the one we have to chat, we're challenged is the staff and we'll work that through okay. to make that accessible as well. You can also point out that the automated book sorter um, location um, has been placed towards the front um, entrance. Um, the question is going to come at, do we allow the access to that book sorter in that vestibule? In other words, you go through the door yeah. and drop versus outside of it. Those are, mm -hmm. those are details because we've done it and has been handled both ways. But because this is a historic building, tendency probably will be to have to figure out how to get, you know, after hours if people want to drop books into the automatic sorter system when they come to the library. Right. And that's, we talked to Sharon about that a little bit, Tony, is that, um, there, I think, Sharon, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there one at the street, a book drop? There, there is, it will need, it will need to be replaced. Sure. Um, but so as people, people are still going to come up to the building, um, whether it's opened or closed. I mean, ideally, if we could somehow have a hole in the exterior of that wall, um, that would be the ideal. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. We'll 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 sort that through. I mean, there's we, a window there now, right? Could yes. could that window be turned into yeah, a book we return? Can, we can look at maybe a portion of the window. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But you still want one at the curb. Yeah, I think we're going to need one. I think that's true of all libraries, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? on this floor. I'm not seeing any hands. Well, two. Josephine, do you Sorry want to that. start out just telling us what the different colors, what group it is? Oh, sure. <laughs> Give me a second to get to level two. Okay. So the main um, color you see here is purple, which is the adult collection. Um, that envelops pretty much um, a good chunk of the, um, of the second floor. Um, but the new color that we introduced here was um, the salmon color, which is the ESL. It's just taking a second to regenerate. It is loading slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of bookshelves. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, um, so now you can see um, all the furnishings. Um, so yes, the new, the new area here that we introduced is ESL on this um, southwest corner of the building. But um, the deeper purple was um, Basically, the you know administrative um, staff area, and then um, and then most of it is again the adult um, collection. We do have the reading room at the front of the um, original building, um, a couple of quiet study spaces as we had previously, um, and then this uh, main corridor that connects the original building to the new wing, um, and and with that. Again, most of the new wing is the adult collections. Um, but let's just focus in a little bit here on um, the uh, ESL, um, since this is the new piece um, and most of the changes on this floor. So we did bring this up from ground level, as you recall. Um, and the idea here is that we would be able to squeeze in a couple of groups session rooms um, into the original building. Um, and we were able to get in these two rooms um, with the roof lines um, that we have, which works great. 
Um, and so this is in the original building footprint. Um, what we did uh, is bring the Tudor rooms into the, the new part of the, um, the addition. Um, so all of this um, would be at the same level. Um, so the Tudor rooms and the group session rooms will maintain um, the same level to floor slab. Um, and then, of course, as you recall, we do have a couple of steps that bring you up to the um, rest of the adult collection here. So the idea is to keep the ESL in this um, uh, in this corner of level two, and so they can uh, maintain the proximity, and um, and have the coordinator um, also have sight lines, uh, assuming that these are basically glass walls that that enclose these spaces. Um, uh, so, you know, they would have the proximity and sight lines. Um, with that, um, we understand that, you know, there is that level change here, but we think there's an opportunity to have maybe clear story or frosted glazing on this, on this side here too. So there is some sight lines that can happen in between the Tudor room and the adult collection, which would be fun. Um, and we were able to um, also introduce an additional quiet study space um, in this original footprint here, um, which is in this corner. Um, we're still, you know, sort of studying and testing to see the best layout, but at the moment, it seems like this will work for a small um, group study, maybe a two-person group study room. Um, and this is because we did um, move some of these elements. Um, we understand the period, periodical storage is probably going to change, but it's still shown as that. Um, but we'll, what we did do is um, bring one of the offices up here to um, the adult collection area, and it's the head of information. Um, and so we tucked a couple of spaces back here because we seem to have the footprint for it. Um, so we added a quiet study and a head of information in this corner, which we think will create um, an interesting space and, and again, more sight lines for um, that, you know, that north um, nonfiction um, section. And, Sha and Sharon didn't see that, just when we slipped that in, so to we speak, did. the additional um, uh, quiet study, and that can go or stay, but we thought it, 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 it fit pretty well into the space, but, you know, My my only concern is where is the head of I, the IT person, the IT's office? He he used to be down here, uh, uh, but where the periodical storage is. That was the head of head of information. This room here. Yes. Yeah. yeah so um, yeah, head of um, head of head of technology. He needs a an office and a you know a storage space for all the computers that he's working on it, so it used to be located where those periodical storage what's it the, what's the best adjacency for that for that office uh it doesn't really matter it would be great for it to be on this floor um okay I, the, the office that we relocated, Josephine, is called the, what is that again? The, um, it's the head of information. And is that different from the technology guy? Yeah, so head okay. of information services is the reference librarian. Okay. All right, so we'll give them a space. Okay. Yeah. And if you have to get rid of a group study room, then okay. staff are in favor of that. Because I think it will be a little bigger than just a regular office. It, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have a similar setup in our office, Sharon. Yep. Christine, may I ask a question? Yes, please. So again, this is uh, really, really terrific. I, I remain concerned about the step up uh, issue uh, and how that's going to work. I, we've been talking about it for a very long time. Um, I, uh, I, I don't have anything to say except I remain concerned about it uh, in terms of if I'm, if I'm in a wheelchair, I've got to go from one level to another. If I understand this through that elevator, uh, it just doesn't seem to me, I mean, again, I, I don't have a, 
solution for you, but it doesn't seem to me to be um, uh, quite friendly to universal design, so to speak. Uh, maybe there's no way to solve it. My other uh, question, again, emerges from the comments that you'll have a chance to look at even more. And that has to do with the um, uh, ESL. So if I'm an ESL person uh, and I'm waiting to meet a tutor, uh, where, where do I wait? I mean, some of the public comments, you know, it was like they wanted a kind of living room area, something like that. I'm not sure that's what we need. But and then my last question involves the beautiful uh, existing stairway. So I come up that stairway, uh, as I understand it, fabulous. And uh, I come around and um, what's there? I mean, it looks like just a big empty area right there, a kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, landing area? Or I mean, what is there and what will the signage be to tell me where I need to go if I need to go back into the uh, collection? It's a good question. Um, and I'm not sure if there's any intended um, artwork to be hung. Um, we certainly could have signage. Um, it, it's something that will evolve as we, mm -hmm. as we, you know, develop for sure. Um, and it could be a bench or a seat, you know, just that could be used for reading, but throughout the entire library, Austin, we'll have wayfinding signage. So people are not left high and dry on where to go. And that's part of the, um, as we go through the design, that's something that we'll be mindful of that we really need direct to direct folks around the library. I think that the reason, I mean, the, the stairway is so fabulous. Um, I think a lot of people are gonna use it. Okay. Uh, you know, they come in, uh, especially they've habituated themselves to, they, they wanna go upstairs. And uh, I'm just trying to imagine myself coming up from those stairs and I wanna go back to the back of the building. And I've got to go through some little hallway there and then go through the BSL kind of waiting area, if that's that, and then up a couple of stairs. So um, it is what it is, but I think we want to be aware of um, the likelihood that for many people, this is going to be, this is, this, this is going to be, they're going to go up those stairs. Mm -hmm. I think you, you raised a really interesting question, uh, Austin, to the earlier one about the accessibility issue vis-a-vis -vis the stepped up. Um, the, the challenge, as you as you probably well know, is that in order to create the sufficient ceiling height, and this is this portion, of course, is all the new in the um, collection behind the ESL areas, we have to elevate a few steps up. Otherwise, the ceiling height gets really compressed, and it's not going to feel well. One thought. Um, it's not going to handle the accessibility ramp question because we don't have enough space for that, but I, I'm just spinning aloud here. So you see where the steps are right now next to the elevator, those three steps that go up. To answer a different kind of question, when you come up the, the beautiful historic stair and then lead through, I, I might suggest a thought is to shift those steps uh, where they're currently those are a couple lounge seating elements are and put it directly there because it will be a much more direct connection. So you don't have to turn right and then go up. Um, to allow better flow, at least into this upper section. So it's gonna feel more open and inviting. But also to, to Austin's question about, you know, accessibility. So it's three steps and the steps are approximately seven inches each. Right. So that's 21 inches vertically, approximately that we're changing. So to do a ramp of that, you're talking 21 foot ramp. Right, which is we can explore that. I mean, I, I think you, you would wrap it around maybe the back of the um, uh, the e ESL uh, quiet studies. Yes, just being perfect. That's where it would go. Uh, and we can look at that, Austin, and see if you if it's a better setup for the library. We're happy to do that. Yeah, and I, I appreciate it. And don't I don't have a solution. Uh, I just do. One of our goals is to as much as possible use principles of universal design ramp is one way but it's not again sort of the principle of universal design it's the principle of kind of retrofitting something into a into a space but uh i i think you, we're going to have conversation we're likely to continue to have conversation about this so sure. i just want to 
flag yeah. it for you. Yeah, so. and, and when we have the opportunity to do a new library, we don't have this issue. It's the it's it's joining the old and the new. And that's the, that's we're with you on that, Austin. We will continue to push that and come up with a nice solution. I um I like Austin when he brought up the point about the old staircase from the front when you walk mm -hmm. up. Um, I think right now you walk up and turn left, but now you'll walk up and turn right. And it's for people unfamiliar with the library, you do kind of dump into this little bit of a tight zone. And mm -hmm. I know you'll have signage, but I like that idea of possibly moving those three steps a little bit to the west. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, cause then you'd see them. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But I know you're talking about the ramp too, and it's hard to fit everything, but I did like that idea. We'll see what we can do to make it feel as generous as inviting mm -hmm. as possible and to reduce the feeling of barriers. And to Austin's point, inclusiveness absolutely is really critical. So we'll do what we can to address that. Thank you. Are there any other questions on this floor? I'm not seeing any hands. So um, that pretty much brings us through, through the changes. Um, I guess what I can do here is I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Yeah, to this is this is strange. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> See if that's any quicker. Um, so this um, this floor maintained um, its you know same program and. Um, and square footage and spaces. So nothing has changed at the top floor here, which is the boardroom and the staff break room and uh, circulation. And, and we, so there's the existing stair just came and we have to add <clears throat> another stair for egress. So we have two stairs coming up here. Yes. Um, and that pretty much takes us through the plans. Um, and so we can either just check back in if there's any final questions or talk about um, the gender inclusive restroom. Yeah. However you'd like. Sharon, I see your hands up. Yeah, I just want to say, and and poor Ellen and Josephine and Tony uh, have heard me say this multiple times. So I, you know, all along this process, I've said to staff, "Hey guys, this is going to be awesome when it's done. <laughs> so much better." Um, but there is probably going to be at least one thing that drives all of you insane. There's there's going to be something that just doesn't click. For me, it's the it's maintaining that that mm. front original elevator. Um, so I. I, you know, this meeting's being recorded. I just want to, I, I just want people to hear me say it one last time, maybe. <laughs> um, I, ideally, that elevator would, would go away. There would just be one elevator in the building. I do understand what it means design-wise, um, you know, making the new elevator and staircase come up to this top level. I understand what that means design wise um, and possibly cost wise, mm -hmm. but I think long term having to maintain two elevators is not great. Thank you. No, and Sharon, we t it's we talked about this again we in in our office just yesterday, right? Because we totally understand two elevators to maintain them over time is cost. There's no question. And the one the, the existing one, um is not the best size either uh so that it's a trade-off and it's something that you know we should discuss here uh, as a group is to demo the existing elevator is cost and then to ex extend the new one up and make a connector over is cost but long term it will even out right because you're you're going to be paying more maintenance for two elevators than one. So it's, and I know Tony has, I don't know if you have that handy, uh, Tony, but it's it, the, it's, once we bring that, that elevator up, it is quite bulky um, yeah. on the exterior. I, I think it's a really valid point you're raising, Sharon, for all the reasons that you said and Alan has reiterated. I, I think we'd have to really study this very carefully. Um, and, and aside from, 
the cost issues. I think from an architectural um, massing standpoint, um, and I don't think we have to get into this right now, right here, but when we, when we look at that or can look at that, uh, there definitely is going to be impact in terms of its visibility from the front. At some point, exerting a stair elevator extending up, we're going to have something that's going to pop up behind the historic building or on top of the historic building that's going to be more prominent. It could draw more attention to um, the um, architectural uh, look of the building because it's going to literally pop up uh, and we have to run you know, the elevator higher, of course, with it because we're extending that level. Anyways, I don't want to kibosh it. We can certainly study this some more, uh, Sharon, but there, there are a number of factors that come into play as a result of this. I, I, and I think I, I, Tony, I'd like to get, uh, uh, you know, just some comments from the from the committee on how they view this, uh, you know, is just some thoughts of if if that's something that we should pursue, um, knowing the, you know, additional costs, but long term better for the library. How soon would this decision have to be made? Uh, pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, so. But we're flexible, Christine. I mean, you know, you can certainly think about it at the next meeting, maybe just give us your thoughts. And in the meantime, we can send over um, some of the images that we have from our previous study um, that shows you this, what it looks like from the exterior. Would that be fair? Give you guys some time to think about it. Sounds good. Austin, do you think um, we should just wait? Well, when is the next meeting? For us, we don't have one on the 10th. We do have one for another round of comments on the 16th. So I guess the soonest we could do is the 16th or should we take this straight to the whole building committee for the talk on the elevator? I think it, it should be raised with the building committee. Um, my own, uh, I wanna hear from George first and then- uh, Yeah, I just, <laughs> well, I'll say George is um, it on the elevator or is it on some, a new topic? It's a new topic. That's what I thought. Do you mind waiting for a moment? I don't mind waiting. Thank you. So Austin, just to finish up with the elevator, um, do you want that to move on to your next meeting or should we keep it in design for the 16th? Um, I think we know that this is going to be an uh, going to be an issue. I think we should flag it for the whole committee, so that everybody's on on board with this. My own tentative view to be subject to just being told I'm wrong <laughs> is um, I, I think we don't want to have these two elevators. And um, but I can't say that without knowing what the cost you know relative costs are. But I, I think it might not be a great thing to have these two elevators, especially given that the one of them that we've been living with is always remarked upon as you know one of the uh, not greatest features of the of the current library. But uh, we we need know we 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 would need to know about cost and other design implications. So Ellen, when you mm -hmm. uh, come back to us. Can you bring us some pros and cons? I think you know the oh, in general yeah. the questions we're going to ask, and yep. of course, demo costs are probably one thing that we're wondering. Yeah, and we can work with Craig and come up with the pros and cons and in some uh, just ballpark costs for sure. We can do that. That'll help everybody. Okay, so Austin, you want to do that at the next? Is that the seventh, June seventh, that meeting? Um, as soon as we, this is, I take it a major design element. Yes. yes so it is. As soon as we can uh, make sure everybody on the building committee knows what's going on, I think that would be very, very helpful. And I, I just would like the building, the whole building committee to have a chance to hear Sharon and others about this elevator question, because it does seem like you really are going to need to know about this elevator. So give us the information and let's have mm -hmm. the whole committee weigh in if, if that's okay. Great. Sounds good. Uh, so on the seventh, Josephine, could you roll back down to like the first or second floor and just point out where these two elevators are for the public, anyone watching this so they see what we're saying and just say the old and the new. So this is level one and this is the new elevator here. And this is the original elevator location. Okay, and that's the one that is in debate. Do you take it, demo it? 
-hmm. And what would you still build it in the the new proposed, the, or is that about yes. moving? The the new location will remain here. And and that's actually um, where the um, issue was. If we just go up uh, back to the top floor where we were, um, you you can see here that that new elevator doesn't come up to this level at the moment. But we do want to make this level accessible. It has so to. So in yeah. order to do so, um, yes, it has to be. Um, so in order to do so, we would bring the new elevator up. But what that introduces here, and we'll show you at the next. Um, well, the next Josephine, do we have that handy? that old plan i know uh, steve may have we, we lo looked at it yesterday yeah steve was pulling up some images yesterday do you have that available to look let at? me drop those in our meeting folder i'll get, get those behind the scenes right now okay and we'll talk about the bathrooms and maybe come back to this give steve a minute to find that okay it, well, i'm gonna flip to george he's had his hand okay. up for a long time so <laughs> george you had a question it's virtual it doesn't hurt to hold up my hand this long. <laughs> um you just it looked tired <laughs> um this is just a general comment it's not for any specific area and it may be a little premature but i wanted to make sure it's on everybody's radar um we have 11 um pieces of art that have been restored using public funds that will need to be on public display. Um, so moving forward, we'll have to think about wall space. Now, most of them are, you know, your typical normal sizes, but we do have that Grillo painting, which currently takes place in the fiction room, uh, which is to become the teen space and the wall that it is on will no longer exist. Um, so just moving forward, we have to be mindful of those pieces uh, that they will have to be in dis on display in some publicly mm -hmm. accessible area. Um, and the other piece I wanted to just briefly mention was the whip, the uh, the Whipple window, which is currently in special collections. It's that crescent shaped window uh, that will also have to be incorporated somewhere uh, that can be publicly seen. Mm -hmm. George, do you have an inventory of these that includes the size of each piece? We do, and I could probably get that to you before I go on vacation. Oh, great. Okay. That would I'm, be helpful. That would I'm be helpful. Not, yeah, I'm not certain if I have the dimensions of the Grillo piece, but I could get that for you. Okay. Uh, that would be great. Okay. Any other questions on this so far? I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, so um, Ellen, you can decide if you want to start. Do you, Josephine, do you have, uh, I'm, I know Steve put them in a folder. Could we share that, what we had previously, or how do you want to do it? Yeah. yeah, it's in that same folder, Josephine. And I don't know, and uh, you know, we should have said this in the beginning. I don't know if you guys were introduced to Steve. Steve is a new team member of ours. I know Sharon met him earlier, uh, and Craig has have met him. So Steve is our partner in crime moving forward. Welcome, Steve. Thanks. Nice to meet you all. So Josephine, can you access that, or I can? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out which image to open up. So yeah, the, I included I included the plans from 2016, which may may be helpful, may not be, and then I included a, a number of screenshots from the model we had back in 2016 to show the bridge and the impact they would have on uh, level one. So part of our challenge, as everybody knows, is we have this wonderful historic building, and we have to deal with mass historic and go through those that process, which we're used to doing. We do that uh, often on, our, on the buildings we work on. So I, if I remember correctly, it, that we talked about this in 2016. I, I, I don't know all the details, but we moved away from it um, because I think of the bulk of what it did to the building. But with that said, it's something we should, we should really get everybody in agreement on moving forward. So this is sort of a plan at that same top level that we were looking at where the boardroom and staff room are. So herein lies the issue is that the elevator connection removes the stair location that we had. So we had to introduce 
um, a new stair here to have two means out of the space. Um, of course, you know, a code report is being done. We'll have more information as, as this is all evolving. Um, and to, you know, to understand um, what we need for egress at this level with the capacity, but, um, but here we'll get some 3D images up, I think, next, but this is probably, you know, what we were looking at previously when we had the elevator come up here. It, it is invasive uh, to the existing building. But we will provide you with pros and cons of both. I just, since we had this, we were talking about it in the house yesterday, I thought it'd be helpful to share. Yeah, and I think the other important thing when we do this for you is uh, we're going to have to generate 3D views because this, you can see the yeah. stair, uh, the elevator is one thing, but the, this continuation of the stair to connect for the second means of egress, the stair C, um, is definitely going to become visible um, as a pretty big element on, behind the historic part of the, of the library. So we'll, we don't, need to talk about how to resolve this right now that's up we'll come back to you but this is one of those mm -hmm. design historic issues that Ellen pointed out uh, well, uh, definitely um, boom, um, because it's going to be very visible and yeah I think what we'll do too is yeah pull some of the exterior shots um, that yeah. we were viewing internally mm -hmm. a few years back yeah. um, just to show you the impacts from the exterior where you actually will see the, you know these elements from that would be really helpful okay all right so we'll send this on with the 3D images to you guys. I just wanted you to understand what the footprint was. Yeah. So bathrooms, Josephine? Oh so, yeah, bathrooms. Um, so, you know, just to circle back to where we were, um, we, we have been talking to our um, code consultant and um, he did note that if we wanted, you know, to pursue, it would be a variance um, to get to a gender inclusive um, situation. They don't always get approved, um, but he is going to start talking to um, the state inspector to see what the chances are of that. Um, if it were to, you know, to go through, like what the possibility might be. Um, and so we thought we just would sort of talk through with you the different options um, of what that would mean for um, a gender inclusive bathroom because there's so, so many different types and mm -hmm. so um, some of them don't change the layout all that much and some actually change it quite a bit so what we did was just pull a couple of images together um, more of more um, so of an aggressive layout um, they don't necessarily need to go this route but um, I don't know if you can see that well but yeah um, this is this is one of yes the more aggressive layouts where basically it's just a joined bathroom and you have closed off stalls and then um, a, you know a sink layout that is being used by everyone. So this sort of grows the footprint probably a little bit of the restroom and might be a little more on the expensive side of the three different types that they that exist. But this is. Um, if a variance were to be approved, this is definitely um, one of those options that don't exist in the plumbing code right now. If you were supposed, if you went and looked up what the counts would be for for um, for what would, would be required, right? And just the the current plumbing code hasn't caught up with where we are today in our real lives, right? So that's the, a lag. So the plumbing code now requires. Uh, it's it's based on the occupancy occupancy of the building, and it's it tends to have more fixtures in the women's room than the men's room. And then the men's rooms they have to have urinals. So it's it's going to throw the you know it's going to totally change that when they adopt this um, gender neutral bathroom. So I think that by the time we get through this, I'm sure it's going to be all settled. But to get us through it, we may, we will have to go for a variance. We are also do work at college and universities, and they're also on the same page as you guys are, uh, gender new, neutral, neutral bathrooms. So I, the tide is turning on that. So we're hoping it's an easier um, avenue, um, but we will, at the moment, we'll have to get a variance. Is there anything in the meantime that we can do as Massachusetts voters to help move this along? I certainly would call your local rep. Okay, thank you. 
that can't hurt. They do, they do have some influence. And our code consultant did mention that the more variances they see, the more hopefully this will push mm -hmm. them. <laughs> so I'm not seeing any hands up, but um, so looking at the example you've given here, you said the more aggressive, like this looks very much like what's being built on the UMass campus, like in their um, student union. Um, but they have a much more narrow demographic than what our library oh, will yeah. have. Uh, so I'm wondering about like security and just library, librarians are building observation. You know, these doors go from ceiling to floor. And how do you monitor like how yeah. long if someone's been in there for hours or if they're sick, you know, because we're used to the stalls that have less privacy, but you can see what's going on. We could do those as well, Christine. This was just an example. I mean, that's a really good point. Um, we know, you know, from our library library work, um, the bathrooms can be a place that people do go, and you, you they're not monitored. Um, and that's why one library we did they didn't want any single stall bathrooms because it was just too risky. Um, but we can we can do it that the the doors don't go to floor to ceiling that they're open at the bottom. We, we, you know, there's flexibility in that. Good, good. I think it's a, it's a very, very important topical issue, which is being oh, yeah. raised here. And, yeah. and there's, of course, there's many things, um, a lot of research and, and still ongoing, swirling around it. And, and you're right, the balance between security, privacy, um, you know, once you do this step. And I think that's why the tendency has been the full height doors in particular, out of concern for privacy, that was counter to the thing you're just raising, seen as far as monitoring. So there's a, there's going to be a, quite a bit of debate about that. I don't think there's actually a clear answer on this issue uh, because it is relatively new coming into a lot of public places, and I think people are still filling this out. Um, so there's still a lot of research, a lot of things that are certainly moving in in this way. But I, I think there's a lot of things are still emerging about yeah. all this. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and yeah. I I think that college and universities are driving a lot of it. But as you said, Christine, that's a narrow demographic. That's an excellent it point. Is. Uh, any other questions from the group here on this? And just to clarify, what floor are we talking about this on all the floors? Uh, and then do we still have, I call them the family bathrooms or the... Um, individual rooms that and where would the like infant changing tables be so um that of course would be um if you know we went this route um it could go a couple different ways um so you'd have the public restrooms that might be set up this way um pending um space requirements too we do have the most footprint for our toilets at that ground level because of the meeting rooms um but um, the level one bathrooms would remain the same because those are individual stalls. Um, and so those would just remain as unisex toilet. toilet Can we stalls. show the plan, Josephine, just for those who aren't, um, maybe the public is not. Yeah, that would be helpful. Following. So the bulk of the occupancy for large, large gatherings is on the lower level. Do you oh. want to bring that up, Josephine? Yeah. Um, and that would get the, that would get the, the um, multi-stall uh, toilet rooms. And then throughout, we have other single stalls uh, sprinkled throughout the building. This would be your, you know, your big, biggest impact here at the ground level. I think and... the, um, as, a, as a follow up to that discussion, this whole discussion, um, as Chelsea pointed out, the. Um, this uh, gender neutral bathrooms is gonna take up more area. So it might impact, um, for example, you can see right here, this is the conventional bathroom configuration of men and women. If it ends up growing, um, some things may have to give um, to offset that growth of here. We'd have to test this, but I'm just already looking at the plan right now, you can see what Josephine pulled up previously, you know, those are definitely wider and they're bigger. So anyway, yes. these are things that we have to get into yep. in terms of code and all of that impact and what it really means. 
Can I ask? So, uh, Austin, you're not on my screen anymore. I don't. So I could be talking to nobody at this point. But um, (laughs) do you think we should bring this to the full JLBC as well um, to have a discussion to see how strongly everybody feels? Yeah, I think it's another issue that's going to uh, impact. Is that a verb? It's going to influence the design. And uh, I think the more people have a chance to weigh in early on, the better we will be. Absolutely. Thank you. And so Ellen, how, what is the time frame on making, you know, the elevator I can see is very, needs to be decided real quick. Should we do the bathrooms at the same meeting or can that? I think I, I would like to, I, I honestly would like to get a read from the larger group where they're heading I, because it, this is so important and we need to get it right. Um, and I, you know, just I've been mindful as I was traveling in the last month and just how people are handling it. Some people are just taking the names off the bathrooms and you can use whatever one you want and everything else remains the same. Um, not that saying that's how we're going to do it because we're, we are building new, but I think we, I'd, I'd really like to get a, a, a read from your larger group, how they're seeing this. And, and we noted that that the layouts we showed are the more aggressive um, types, but yeah. there are restrooms, as Ellen just mentioned, that um, folks are just setting them up the same way and go into whichever one mm-hmm. you like. And then there are some where there are just no urinals and it's just toilet stalls, um, but it's set up just as you would be viewing this plan right now. It's the same type of setup. So that last sheet that we were looking at is definitely just a, a newer way of that people are handling um, gender neutral stalls and and as we noted, just the more aggressive approach because it will change the footprint a little bit. Josephine, do you, I know you showed us the aggressive, uh, an example of the aggressive one. Do you have pictures of the other choices as well? We don't, but it would be very similar to a okay. typical layout because it would just be toilet stalls Thank you. and or your choice of urinals, yes, so. Okay, well, great. All right, so um, Austin, that will also go on the August 7th agenda june, june I mean, you don't mean august because i mean june yeah. 7th. <laughs> thank you're you. wishing our summer away <laughs> there you go thank you august 7th meeting uh the full um jones library building committee okay um so we have is there, are there any other questions on the everything they presented today or comments or suggestions? I'm not um, seeing any hands. Um, this all looks really great. Um, you're working all these little puzzle pieces, trying to check off all the boxes and I appreciate that. Um, So we will see you at the June 7th. I'm thinking I have two administrative um, things still on the agenda that uh, FAA doesn't need to be here for. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna, if if it's all right with the rest of the group, I wanted to move to item A, public comment at this point, because my guess is if there are questions in that group, it might, it's good to have FAA still here. If that's all right with everyone. We're fine with staying on, Christine, however long you need us. You sure? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hate to. All right. Well, these next two things won't be very um, long. So at that point, I'll move on to item five, public comment evaluation part two planning. Um, Craig, uh, I do believe that you were going to go through the remaining list and send our group uh, like a round two of comments to go through on the 16th? Yes, uh, and I just wrapped that up yesterday, so I will send that out this morning. I gave uh, Sharon a sneak peek, but I will share it with the full design committee um, by email right after this meeting. Right, and And did FAA get the round one spreadsheet? Yes. Yes. You did, great, wonderful. Okay, so we will watch for that. Um, I'm not used to with your glasses. I'm like, yeah. this is the funny <laughs> Zoom. I'm like, oh, he's wearing glasses today. Yeah, once a um, week I get my eyeballs a rest. <laughs> take out the contacts. Um, 
And are there any questions from the group on that? On moving on to the next part two, phase two. All right, great. Um, now item six is possible outreach tools. I just wanted to give a heads up. Um, and Al Alex was in the, yep, she's still there. And I can watch, see if her hand comes up. But we met with a couple of guys from UMass, uh, students who are working on two different tools. One is called the small town tool, which uh, the outreach group is planning to use, which is more sort of like a social media thing where you can post things and polls and, um, you can control, then the comments are monitored and they would um, make sure that it's being run cleanly. Uh, so that's a tool they might be using. And we could send something maybe like we got these schematics if we thought of a way that we wanted to, or maybe after the meeting on the seventh, uh, gender inclusivity, uh, that kind of question, we could post something on that tool and ask specific questions for people to weigh in and get some feedback. The second one is called Community Click, and it's sort of like a virtual tool that would run in the background of like this meeting we're having right now. So we could either pause and ask questions and then um, there is a little bit of a technical ability there. You have to have the app and, and a learning tool for not everyone would be able to handle this. But you know, this is the way the world is evolving and we're all trying to learn the new tech tricks. So that's something that outreach might come to us and ask at one of our future meetings if we would be willing to utilize this tool and collect data as sort of live as we go through it in the meetings to get feelings. So um, I know it's kind of hard. To, they had like, they could actually slightly demo it for us. So it was much more visual for us to understand. But um, if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. And uh, Alex is also there when we switch, she can answer um, any questions about them. And if they're thinking of how soon to use them. Any questions on that? Okay, so at that point, uh, the next one is, um, I don't have anything 48 hours in advance and I'll go to public comment. So. We did have a, seven people in there earlier. Now we have four. So I see the four uh, and I see one hand up. Any other hands? Okay. Um, and since we don't have Angela, is someone allowing Hala Lord to come in? Yep. Talking permitted. Hello, welcome. Hello, thank you. I'm just here as a representative of Mindy Dome, and I wanted to let you all know that a year ago, she presented a bill for gender inclusive, gender neutral oh. bathrooms. And as of last month, it's been referred to House of Ways and Means. So it's, it's moving forward. And thank you for talking about it and have a good day. Great, thank good. you for telling us that. It's good to know. Any other questions? I don't see any other hands up. Okay. So our next meeting, um, not August, June 10th, we have a field trip and we will be uh, around the, uh, some of us will be going to a uh, public library of Woburn and uh, Medford to see their new facility. Um, and then on the 16th, we're going to do June 16th, the second round of evaluating comments from the public. And then our next regular meeting will be June 24th. Um, so I'm not sure when uh, FAA, when you're thinking you'll want to come back for where, you know, Craig, can you pull up our little calendar thing again? Just Absolutely. where we're at, because unbelievably that's June 24th. What date is the end of schematic design? Mm -hmm. And I know actually Alex is out there. There's a bunch of outreach events that are coming up too. So there will be the 24th might be evaluating more comments also, like around three. I think we want to, Christine, what we haven't done and we yeah. need to do is talk about the exterior materials and i think we would like to do that sooner than later um and we can work that you know around your schedule for sure but 
um, we need to get something, some, we'd like feedback from you, your group. Uh, so we include that in the schematic design. Would the 24th be okay or is that too late? I, where are we? I, will be a little well, late for us yeah. um, to squeeze it into our SD package. Okay, so how about the 16th or do you need it even sooner than that? which probably means having a meeting next week. I think we probably need one. Yeah. I hate to tie you guys up on two Friday mornings. Yeah. Um, so that would be Friday, June 3rd. I think yeah. George, are you on vacation? Uh, yes, I'm on vacation from the 31st through the 8th. Okay. But I also don't want to hold up the process. I could probably, um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm permitted to uh, give my vote virtually or not. You should totally Zoom from wherever it is that you're going yeah. on vacation. Make so us jealous. From from Cinderella's <laughs> castle, guys. Yes, it. there you go. <laughs> no, so can can you guys give us examples of what we're talking about? like soon that way we can all be looking at it and then maybe george if you can give it to us before he leaves then he can give his input before he leaves and then we can be on the third so for the third uh uh i'm happy to meet i have a meeting previously scheduled meeting that begins at 9 30 so I'm, I'm sorry i didn't anticipate this uh we'd have to either meet earlier some other time sorry could we, could we do 8.30? Is that too early? Yeah. I think that works for us, right? We're kind of early birds. And that'll just be on the exterior materials? Yeah. Okay. And we, we can get you what we have currently, okay. right? Ahead of time, Sharon. I think that's a good point. You guys can think about it. Awesome. And, and can it, works. yeah, can it be like what it looks like as well as cost? Exactly. Yes, we can work with Craig to figure that out. Okay. <laughs> or at least okay. knowing most expensive, least expensive. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm thinking, Christine, would be would be possible in the time frame. Yeah. Christine, if I just may, uh, I yes. want to first of all thank you, Ellen and FAA, but um I I want to make sure that you drive us, not us drive you. So if there are things that you need at any time from the design subcommittee, outreach from the whole building committee, uh, we, we want to be, be on your schedule okay. as much as possible. So don't be shy about saying, actually, uh, Friday the 3rd is too late. I need you to meet on it you know, sooner than that or okay. at, at any time. I, I, Christine, sorry to, to do that. But I do think that as a general principle, your schedule should drive ours, not the reverse. Okay. No, that's great. And yes, so I think the third should be fine. It gives us a little bit of time to, to pull some things together for you. Um, but yes, thank you, Austin. That's helpful for us to be driving the schedule. So building on that, um, so this exterior is just, what is the next thing that you see coming up that you're going to need before the end of this schematic design phase? Um, what do you think, Josephine? Josephine, yeah, thank you. Oh, yes. you're thinking, oh, yeah. In my, in, my head, in my head, I think we've made great progress working with Sharon, um, yeah. getting the floor plans where we need them. Um, so we're pretty close on that. So with the exteriors next, and that, that's mostly it, right? Because we've been at this for a while with you guys. Um, yeah, I think we internally will be some refinements, you know, maybe just yeah. to touch base with Sharon on some of those refinements of collections, et cetera, right? Um, yeah. And I don't know, Steve and Tony, if you have any thoughts of something that we're, the elevator's big, but we're, we've got that uh, scheduled. But um, I think if we meet on the 7th on that, that's sufficient time. Don't you think, Josephine? Yeah. The 7th for the bathrooms. In the, the elevator, yeah. In the elevator. Yeah. Um, what about, as time is ticking, and I, Craig, what is the end date of this that we have 
is it July 9th? So oh. the, um, let me see here. Because my thinking is I know there were some steps about historical stuff in there and I didn't know if there's anything we need to weigh in or firm to prepare for that too. So I, according to my schedule, we want to have the uh, design, the schematic design package wrapped up by the, the, the end of June so that we can put it out for cost estimating. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a, I think a three week window for that, two week window for the actual cost estimating. Um, so that, that's what we're aiming for now is, is getting Feingold Alexander all the information they need in the next couple of weeks so that they can by, uh, I think it's like June 27th ish, um, have their final schematic design package. Right. And I think, Christine, at that point, we would start to talk to Mass Historic. And it's the elevator. Um, that's why the elevator is uh, location or not location, deleting one and extending one is, is key. But at the, we'll have a, so with the schematic package will be perfect to start talking to Mass Historic. So, Craig, when would the building committee um, as a whole vote on the schematic design? Or like say, yep, this is it. This is what we're gonna. Do you wanna share your screen, Craig, so we can all sure. see the schedule? One moment. There we go. So this, so the end of schematic design is when we would have that uh, vote to sort of move on to, you know, to accept the design as it stands and it's, you know, relative cost uh, and then move into the next phase design development. And so that's currently at the, the end of July. Let's see. Christine, one of the things which, the, um, we're going to discuss the schematics continuously in the uh, building committee. In other words, we're, we're going to be talking about them from this point going forward. So, and we're going to be getting uh, uh, other comments from the public and what the, what the building committee talks about will relate to FAA so that one hopes that by the time we get to the end of the process, there are no surprises, obviously. Um, everybody has seen them. Everybody knows, everybody's hurt, been, been hurt. So we just got, um, so I'm just looking at the calendar. So I wanna make sure there's enough time to, I was just making sure that nothing else needs to be um, put through the design subcommittee that then has to go to the larger group because I think the best thing to do at this point is to have Craig work with Sharon and just kind of review the dates of all the meetings and then uh, Sharon Craig the next time that we're together can say this 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 is what's going to happen and kind of lay out a kind of micro schedule uh, of the kind that Craig has produced but uh, that way we don't have to, you know, we're not speculating. So just come up with this kind of micro schedule. This needs to happen. It's got to go to the design committee. Okay. That would be, I think, helpful. I'm mm -hmm. also unclear exactly what uh, moments have to happen and for different historical groups, because I assume that before things go to them, it has to go through the LARP, you know, the building committee. So I want to make sure there's enough time to get all that properly right. discussed. So, so if Craig and Sharon are willing and they can discuss with you, obviously, as chair of the committee, here, here let produce that micro schedule and share it with Christine. That would be great. Craig, yeah. good? Yes, can do. Thank you. And I'll, I'll be relying on Feingold Alexander for a lot of that historical uh, process. But um, oh, we've yep. already begun sort of that discussion, so I'll touch base with them as well. Annika. Yeah, and, and Craig, if you could look up what for the local um, group and see when they meet, and you know we'll look at their schedule and we'll have to get on one of their agendas. Yeah, Can and you? I know with summer sometimes those groups meet less, so that would yeah. be important to find out. 
in it, it, for Mass Historic, we're able to have a meeting with a staff person rather than a bigger group. So I don't know if Amherst has a, a similar uh, setup, but if you could find that out, that would be great. We'll work with you, Craig. We we talk to Craig all the time. So <laughs> yeah. we'll work it through. Excellent. All right. So at this point, we will next meet uh, next Friday at 8.30 um, mm -hmm. instead of 9. And then uh, we have the whole building committee meeting on the 7th, Tuesday. And then we have the field trips on the 8th and the 10th. So we got a busy couple of weeks coming up. Christy, just right. for my clarification, on the 7th, that bigger group, what time was that meeting? Is that 4.30? 4.30. 4.30. Thank you. Great. All right, so we'll watch for lots of stuff coming from um, FAA and Craig. Thank you all. Uh, are there any other last questions or anything, or we'll adjourn the meeting? We're good. I see nothing. Great. All right. Thank you all for your hard work. Everything looks great, and I appreciate you all. Thank you. Um, have, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, yeah have a good Enjoy the start of the summer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> nice to meet Thank you, Steve. You. Okay.